I, I, uh, I'm a strong believer in that uh, universities should encourage our young people, the students, to uh, think very creative and to adventure into the future. And that means that they have to learn. There should be a very solid basis of fundamental science. And then we should go towards, across borders, towards our future. And that means that we should have a lot of freedom to think, to invent, to discover and to learn. And that is what I mean by playground. A playground to discover, to invent and to learn. And I think we should not forget that because that is a major duty and a task of our universities to help our young people towards the future. Cross borders, go into unknown territory. That is very important to help our students to realize their dreams and to come with new opportunities and options for the future of society, for industry, for our people. Yes, I got a very good impression, of course. I started in Bangalore and then I went to the north and then to Delhi and now I'm here, tomorrow to Calcutta. I got so many institutes. Uh, in, I visited universities, uh, research institutes, and I get a very good impression of the research ongoing. And I'm quite impressed by the drive, the enthusiasm, and also the investments that have been made. Of course, there's a lot to be done, yeah? But uh, I think you have uh, great opportunities. And I see many uh, research institutes where they do uh, very fine research and encourage the students. This morning, we had uh, great discussions at this uh, institute here with the chemists to uh, show, they showed me some of their programs ongoing and I was very much uh, impressed by, uh, by a lot of the work that is ongoing, you know. So, uh, so yes, that uh, makes a very good impression on me. Uh, you have to realize that uh, we are extremely good in building all kinds of machines. Eh? Think of your car all the machines in our factory that produce all the products and our planes and aircrafts, uh, the, the, the trains that we have. But we, uh, we are not good in producing anything that moves spontaneously. Look at your body. The fact that we can talk with each other, that we can see each other, that we can lift our arm, that I can walk in this room. It's all due to tiny motors and machines that power life. Nanoscale machines and motors, molecular motors and machines. That is how life operates. But we have hardly any idea how to do that by molecular design. You know, a piece of plastic that moves, yeah? A drug that can adapt, a pharmaceutical that can adapt a state to the purpose that is needed. A tiny robot that could maybe do a job, yeah? A smart material. Think of a window that could clean itself. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about that this afternoon. For instance, you can think of, think about you know, when you have a cut in your finger, I will mention it this afternoon. Yeah? When you will keep it clean and you are healthy, you don't have to do anything. Eh? It repairs itself. Yes. When you have a, a, a scratch on your car, you have to do, go to the garage yeah, to get it repaired. Now imagine that you can make something that can move, that can pop open. You have a scratch in your car. Light comes in, it pops open, it repairs itself. This is what happens in your body. But in materials, we don't do that, eh? When we have a piece of plastic, now we have the first pieces of plastic. When you cut them, you put them together again, 10 minutes later, you can they are repaired themselves. There's a lot going ongoing in this area. So the whole field of making things dynamic, responsive, moving, is trying to get inspiration from Mother Nature, from your own body, from living organisms, and translate it into smart materials, tiny machines, etc. And that, of course, will change the way we look at materials, the look at the way we do the, all kinds of things. And this is fundamental research, very fundamental research. But think 10, 20, 30 years ahead. The scratch in your car will repair itself. The windows will clean themselves. You will have all kinds of smart robotic type of things. That's the future. What we were very excited about in the, in the past year, past two years, was making a molecular muscle. And I will also mention it this afternoon. And uh, now we uh, make all kinds of responsive surfaces. 
and uh, to see if we can move things and so and uh, and, and, and as I mentioned, uh, repair things autonomously, etc. And uh, yeah, I'm very much uh, in uh, interested in understanding how we can now explore all this motion to make new materials. And that's one of the things we are very excited about. Yeah. That is the other area where we are very excited about. So be, because we can make responsive systems at the molecular level, at the nano scale, we can now make uh, pharmaceuticals that we can switch on and off. So smart drugs. Of course, this is very early stage, but the whole idea is, for instance, that you, uh, you, you take you have a, an infectious disease and you take an antibiotic. We all know that it's a serious problem with antibiotic resistance. Now, if you can make an antibiotic that you can switch on on the spot where it does a job, it doesn't do anything bad with the rest of the body, and it switches off autonomously, automatically after 24 hours, 48 hours, gets in the environment, no resistance build up because there is no antibiotic anymore. Precision therapy. This is where I'm very, this yes. is the other area where I'm very excited about. And we work together now with cell biologists. We work together with medical people in the hospital. And, and this is an area with a lot of promise. And many groups of, around the world are now working in this because this is a very new field, eh? only maybe five, six years old. The rule of a mentor. I, I'm a bit like a coach eh? and, and try to stimulate my students. But of course, we work as a team. Eh? It's not so that I dictate all the time what to be done. Of course, I have ideas and I try to put a framework where uh, young people can work. But I think the most important part of, it, of a mentor is that we stimulate young people. Because all these people here, also at this university, I saw this morning, we had discussions, they are highly talented. So what needs to be done to encourage their talent and to help them and stimulate them so that they come up with very creative things? Because they are the future. We train them for the future. Eh? There's a misunderstanding. People think often that we universities, we train the students for today. No, we train them for the future. They will run your companies. They will do the innovation. They will make new things possible in society in 10 years, 20 years from now. That's our future. And we should train them and we should encourage them and learn them to be critical, stimulate them and, and, and build on their creativity. And this I see as my, my great task, to make them enthusiastic, to stimulate them, of course, also to be critical eh? about when we do a research project and say, oh, you're sure you want to continue? You want to spend six months of your life on this project? Maybe we should do it a little bit different or you have a better idea? I, I will say this this afternoon, follow your dreams. I mean, they are all highly talented, as I mentioned, you know, and so they should they should, they should follow that dream to find out what gives them a lot of energy. And uh, also not to be afraid to do new things and also to be critical because this is what we should do at universities. Also learn them to think critically and to, to really find out what they really love to do because that gives them enthusiasm and spirit. But also it's very important that we learn them to think what is facts and what is fiction because we get completely flooded by information, yeah? We get tsunamis of information these days by our smartphones, by internet and whatever. And there is a lot of nonsense. We should train our students and this is a duty of the university more than ever at schools as well. We have to train to be critical. What does this information mean? Is this useful information? Is it based on facts and data and insights? Quality of thought is really important and this is what we have to train our students.